Welcome MS Translators, we are here again in Milan. We have just finished day three of the ninth joint ACTRAMS ECTRAMS meeting. Uh, it's been a huge three days worth of talks, but we're here again to do our day three summary. We're gonna focus on four talks that we heard today uh, and give you a quick update on those. Before we get into that, what we really should have done yesterday and didn't really make enough of an announcement about is actually the fact that Dr. Joanna Cobbin has joined the MS Translate team. So I just wanted to make a note of that at the start. We're very excited uh, about being able to add her expertise onto the team and, and provide you with another science communicator to share updates from meetings like this. So the first session that we went to today and we were both in this session, so we're gonna talk about one presentation each, was looking at prodromal MS. We've talked a lot about prodromal MS before on MS Translate, but essentially this is looking at this phase before disease onset, before any onset of symptoms that people have related to MS and looking at what happens during that and understanding that there are some differences that occur. Now this is something that probably as the MS community um, you are well aware of. We hear repeatedly um, from people that we talk to on MS Translate that you have this sensation well before you're diagnosed with MS that something was different, that something was off and this is research really starting to catch up with what you've experienced. So, Joe, the first presentation that, that you want to talk about. Yeah. yeah, so today I listened to a wonderful talk from Christine Lebrun from Nice University. And she was talking about some work that they've done looking um, at radiologically isolated syndrome. So basically what this is is that when patients come in and they have a, a, um, a symptom, but it's before MS is actually diagnosed. It's been shown that when those patients are actually um, put on DMTs early, so prevent, it's almost like a prevention, it's actually shown that there's been, um, there's been health benefits in that and in a reduction in the actual onset of MS. So it was a really neat presentation. Yeah, and it sort of really tied in with another theme that we've heard a lot, and I think I talked about in yesterday's video, it's been across almost every session I've been in, mm -hmm. which is, getting people onto treatments yeah. as early as yeah. possible has long-term benefits. Now, usually we're talking about people who have been diagnosed with MS in that case, yeah. that getting them onto an effective therapy early sort of improves their long-term outcomes and delays disability accrual. Here, as you're saying, we were seeing it before even MS yeah. and saying, and this is this is very novel, this is stuff that hadn't really been done before to get people at that stage onto these, these DMTs. So it was yeah. really interesting. Yeah. The other prodrome talk, um, that, that I found really fascinating was a, a talk by Professor Helen Tremlett from the University of British Columbia. Um, MS Long-term MS Translate followers will have seen her before um, on our platform. She's done a few videos talking about her research before and she's been a really a, a big leader in terms of discussing prodromal MS. And the, the data that she presented was really fascinating in mm. showing the all of the things that are occurring and that they can now identify in people who go on to develop MS, but before either MS diagnosis or MS onset, which basically is um, the first symptom that a person can align with, with having MS. And so there were things looking at um, in a five year window um, before that time point that people living with MS have increased hospitalizations, increased depression, increased anxiety, increased visits to, to psychiatrists, increased visits to dermatologists, increased levels of pain, increased headaches and migraine. So just this really wide array of, of yeah. different symptoms and experiences that at that point haven't been tied at all but are being seen more frequently in people living with MS. And so trying to understand what that is and whether or not that is actually part of MS that's starting earlier um, is something that now we need to work out and it, it will give us a lot of information about what's going on. Similarly, there was some primary progressive data which was kind of staggering to me around looking way, way back before yeah. they're diagnosed and seeing, you know, they had data here from, from 30 years before diagnosis where they could see that their cognition was the, the same as healthy controls. But at 20 years prior to diagnosis, there was already cognitive de decline. Yeah. And yeah. then when you get 10 years before, again, it continues to drop off. So in these people with primary progressive MS, there was like really significant cognitive decline happening well before they've been diagnosed with MS. So it's, it's an area that I find really fascinating. I think it's gonna teach us a lot and we're starting to get more and more every year at the conference. Yeah. 
So from that session, which we both really enjoyed, we were then in the late breaking abstract session. Um, and there was again, two talks that we were interested in around that. Um, and I think you're gonna talk about a, a genetics one to yep. start with. So yeah, so Mark Milan, he um, presented some work with um, looking at the association of the novel um, MS severity gene that's recently been isolated, which is Brett's talked about on MS Translate before. And what he was actually able to show is that in patients that have the copy or the um, homozygous um, allele of, of, that's um, associated with MS, they actually have higher rates of brain atrophy. So when MRIs are looked at, you can see higher rates of brain atrophy. And these were, these were, these were shown in two separate studies and it was really interesting. And they also showed that in those patients, they also had higher volumes of white matter lesions. Yeah. So it was really interesting. Um, and these weren't seen in healthy um, controls either. So this is solely in MS patients. Yeah. And so that goes a bit beyond what that first patient show, uh, that first paper showed yeah. where they identified that, that novel genetic marker that was associated with severity where they were seeing things like earlier use of needing a, a walking stick, mm. um, reduced mobility at times. This is now looking at some MRI imaging that, that shows the same thing. So this marker associated with disease severity, really interesting. It We're is. Going to be interviewing yeah. the, the people on that study for the Ectrums podcast coming up. So that'll be, that'll be fascinating to listen to. The last one um, that I just want to talk about really quickly, still topical, unfortunately still topical, is, is COVID-19. Um, as much as the world has, has tried to move on from the pandemic, it is still out there. Um, it is something that we are still dealing with um, on a daily basis. And so this was looking at how COVID-19 infection uh, impacts people living with MS. Um, and while we know that in terms of the actual outcomes of, of COVID-19 infection, it's not generally seen as being any different in people living with MS than um, healthy controls in terms of the outcome of that infection itself. You may remember that there were some hints that people on B-cell therapies may be at a, a slightly increased risk of hospitalization, but generally the outcomes aren't too different. But this was looking at, is there an effect on having a COVID-19 infection on MS-related disease activity? So this was a study um, done through MS Base, led by some researchers at, at Monash University in Melbourne. Um, and they were able to show uh, that their data suggested anyway, there were obviously some limitations associated with it, but that that data suggested that post-infection, people living with MS did have an increased risk um, of some relapse activity. And so really the takeaway message from that was, you know, really doing what we should all still be doing, but just continuing to maintain some sort of you know, health precautions around COVID-19. So things you know, like wearing masks in high risk situations, hand hygiene, all of these sorts of things remain Im important for, for people living with MS in particular, because of the suggestion here that it could have some impact um, on the ongoing disease. So that brings us to the end of our um, three days here. It's been a busy three days. Joe's first Ectrums. Yes. Been a big three days. Um, but we hope you've enjoyed these summaries. As always, if you do have any questions, please just place them in the comments below the video and we'll make sure that we um, answer them as quickly as possible. Um, I will be continuing here in Europe for a little while. We'll be having some meetings and we may be able to bring you some content from some of those with some of the people that I'm catching up with. Um, but I will also be looking at doing a Facebook Live soon so that we can chat with our community about what happened at this meeting. Uh, but in the meantime, we hope that you're all, all doing well, have enjoyed this content and we look forward to talking soon. Thank you, Joe. Thank you.